Hey, welcome back everyone to The Past is Alive. Thank you for tuning in on this chilly Friday in Pennsylvania. I am very eager and excited to present to you the first episode of Fan Mail Friday. Uh, as you can see, I got a few packages here from fans of the channel sent in uh, this week. We have three from actual fans and then we have one um, that I picked up from eBay recently. So we're going to rip that open as well to spice things up. And we have a special sidekick with us today. Helping us out, opening packages. And he is the infamous Bug Eye Ghost from the Real Ghostbusters toy line. And the years have not been too great to him. As you can see, his eye doesn't project out anymore like it's supposed to. He's got these gnarly claws. Actually, on second thought, he looks like he's kind of in a bad mood today. Maybe we'll just put him off to the side and he can just do his own thing for now. But anyways, let's dive right into these packages. I'm excited to show you what I got. Alright, so let's dive right in. We're going to start off with the very first one on top of the stack here. This first class bubble mailer. And this is from a fan of the channel named Dave Miniassi or Miniachi. He actually just sent me an email today. He's from Philly and he drove by the old uh, Fleer factory out there. Pretty cool looking, never seen it before. When I, that's what I said to him. I responded back to the email and I was like, I wonder if there's a bunch of 91 Fleer boxes just sitting in there. So I've heard that before in the past, all these old baseball card factories, they're just sitting there vacant, there's like tons of card cases just sitting out there. But anyways, let's uh, let's tear this up and see what we got. I'm going to do a little shake test first. I always like to do that, see if I can guess what's in here. Sounds like it's a toy of some sort. Maybe a car. i got to be careful here because this thing is kind of... Kind of worried because it seems I don't want to cut whatever's in here. It seems like it's pretty stuffed to the top. I don't want to cut off any of the cards. There is something on a card in here. So do this very, very carefully. I was right. It was there is something at the very top of the package. So Let's see if there's a letter in here first. And there is. Make sure that there's no address on here. There is not. Let's see what we got here, Dave. Hey, thanks for your videos. I've enjoyed them. I like cards more, but appreciate your toy collection as well. Well, thank you, Dave. I enjoy showing it to you. I sent your brother stuff, so I wanted to send you a couple things. Nothing too special, but I thought you might like them. Some things I picked up at a recent flea market. Awesome. I'm a big Cubs fan, so if you have anything from the 90s, you could send along... That would be awesome. I got tons of stuff in the 90s, especially Cubs cards, Sandberg, etc. Probably some Sandberg insert cards I can I could forward your way. If you guys ever come to Philly, let me know. You know. Eric and I have actually been talking about coming to Philly recently and checking some stuff out there. Dave M. Commented in your videos as Damon. Yeah, I definitely remember talking to you on there. Appreciate all your comments, Dave. Glad you like the channel. Let's uh, check out what Dave M. sent here. Oh, I see something Ghostbusters. Whoa! The Ghostbusters iPhone case. The iPhone 5C. This is sick. I don't have this. Nice, Dave. Who are you going to call? This is freaking awesome. I don't think I've ever seen these before. You guys know how much I love this novelty stuff. Made by NerdBlock. I'm guessing this is probably around 2016 this came out. They released a, yeah, 2016 up there at the top. They released a lot of uh, Ghostbusters merchandise around the same time that, that uh, the female reboot Ghostbusters came out. But uh, that was the only thing I like about the actual new Ghostbusters movie in 2016 is that they released a ton of merchandise that didn't particularly pertain to that movie. It's just Ghostbusters in general. So you got a lot of cool stuff when that came out. This is freaking awesome, Dave. Thank you very much for this. I love that. Definitely put that in the personal collection. We got a Pez dispenser. It looks like the Lucky Charms mascot there. Pretty awesome. That is definitely my first Pez dispenser. Pretty excited about that. I used to love Pez when I was a kid. Thank you for that as well. And it looks like we have an uncut baseball card sheet here. And these look pretty old. Paul Mulder, Todd Van Poppel, the infamous rookie bust that you all remember, and Mo Vaughn. Paul Mulder was my favorite player in the 90s for a couple of years. Mo Vaughn, I always liked him too. I was definitely part of the craze for Todd Van Poppel whenever he first came on the scene. These are definitely early 90s. Yep, 
As you can see, they're 1990, 1991 stats. Actually, these aren't even stats. These are actual book values, price, pocket price guide card values. So it looks like the Todd Van Poppel that you guys all remember is from 1991 school rookie card. The book value for a mint uh, Van Poppel was 225 and his classic giraffe, so the minor league card was $3 back then in 91. And his upper deck was three dollars too. Well, I forgot he had an upper deck card. And then Paul Molitor. Well, they got Paul Molitor's rookie card in here too. His '78 tops rookie cards were sixty bucks back in. This is from '91, I believe. Yeah, 1991. Sixty bucks back then. I feel like I remember it being a hundred at one point too. And then uh, his '89 Fleer wasn't doing so hot. Fifteen cents for the mint one. 79 tops, four bucks and a quarter for his 86 Don Russ. And move on rookie card. A 90 score, booked at 250 back then. For some reason, his, his OPG Premier was five dollars. This is pretty awesome though. I like this. I love pieces of history like this. Um, I, th I think I have some of these in uh, in actual price guides somewhere in a box, but I don't think I've ever seen these particular ones. That's freaking awesome. I love that, Dave. Thank you very much. And it looks like we have a couple cards here that could possibly be Pirates cards. We have a Stan Belinda, 90 score. Let's rip this team bag up in here. Stan Belinda, 90 score rookie card. And a Jimmy Barilla. Sort of pronounced that wrong. There's a couple in here. I want to butcher these new players' names. I don't know them all real well. Fernando Romero and Austin Gomber, rookie card. Also, a Fernando Romero, rookie card. These are actually all rookies. Jane Maria, I've, I don't, can't say I've ever heard of any of these players, but um, I will definitely add those to my personal collection. Thank you for those too, Dave. And it looks like we got a Cecil Fielder um, 88 score card as well here. Pretty awesome there. Used to be a big fan of Cecil Fielder. Big time power here back in the day. Thank you so much for this, Dave. I appreciate that. I definitely will um, get you something back in the mail here real soon. I appreciate it. Moving right along. Um, this next one is the thing I bought on eBay. We'll save that for last, I guess. Actually, you know what? Whatever. We'll tear it up in now. Get it out of the way. It's nothing major. Just something I stumbled across on there. I've been watching it for a while. It's only a few bucks. And you guys know how much I love pop culture novelty stuff. Can't resist it, especially if it's only a few dollars. It was a close call cutting that package open. Gotta be careful. But this is a King Arthur Knights of Justice party hat collection. There's six party hats here. Nothing crazy. I think this was like five dollars free shipping. This, this seller has had it on here for I don't know, probably a year, and I've watched it, and just like never wanted to pay five bucks. And I was like, you know what? I like this show a lot. And after doing that video recently, I was like, I want to get as much King Arthur uh, merchandise as I can because a lot of it uh, is kind of tough to find. So five dollars for a set of party hats that I've never ever seen anywhere else except for um, on eBay here. I'll, I'll pay that. Especially because the seller here is not making any money off these at all. You know, it's got to, it had to have cost probably about two sixty six to ship these through eBay. Maybe even a little more, and then the, their fees and whatnot. So they're really made. They probably made a dollar off this honestly. These are from ninety three, and the show actually went under in ninety three, December of ninety three, I believe. So pretty cool. We got King Arthur there, and um, the other knights and whatnot. I wonder if there's an actual set of these. I've never seen anything else besides the party hats. So. That was my pickup for eBay um, the last couple of days. So glad to add that to my collection. The next one I'm gonna rip open here is coming the whole way from Massachusetts from a David Becker. I recognize his name because he's uh, commented before in the videos. So this one kind of feels like a book of some kind this one open push this off to the side and get my trusty blade here if you don't slice in the open I'm having bad luck today as far as slicing open packages or tearing things in half I'm too eager to open to see what's in here 
could be wrong. Looks like this is some cardboard. What could be in here? Is there a letter? I can see there's a letter. There is something in here. Okay. Enjoy the Slimer comics. If I find more real Ghostbusters stuff, I will send them. Come check out my channel at Anything You Wantful or Dave Durango in this search. So I've definitely uh, talked to Dave. He seems like a really cool guy. Seems like he's also into uh, older uh, pop culture stuff, just like I am. So that's awesome. But check out his channel, Anything You Wantful. I'm gonna have to go do that after this video is over. And it says comics inside. So it looks like Dave came across some real Ghostbusters comics, which are awesome. I don't have too many of these. I don't see them very often, honestly. They're pretty tough to find. Oh, nice. We have an old ad for Ninja Gaiden in the back of this one. You guys remember that game? To the old Tiger handheld electronic games. I used to love that game. I used to remember watching Eric play all the time. I don't think I could ever get past the first level whenever I was a little kid and that game was out. I feel like it's one of the hardest games of all time. I'm definitely in that uh, genre. No one could beat me is what it says on top. I uh, definitely I sure could. Oh, this is sick. I've never seen this one. Nice. It's got Winston on the cover there. This is awesome, Dave. Thank you so much. Winners of the Draw Slimer Contest. See inside. This is, um, doesn't have a year on it. I'm going to guess it's probably from like 87 around there. But this is freaking awesome. I have a few real Ghostbusters comics, but I do not have this one. So I'm guessing maybe this is actually from Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters after that, uh, that series kind of kicked in after Series 3. Um, the last two seasons of the Real Ghostbusters was called Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters. So solely focuses on Slimer for the most part. See, the house is also starring the real Ghostbusters. But this is freaking awesome. I love it. I love the artwork on there too. Winston being chased by some ghosts there. I'm not going to tear through it and open it up right now on, on camera, but I'm definitely going to give us a read after this uh, this video is over. So that's the first one is the Slimer comic. And what do we have here? I always love these old school ads on here. Um, culture Brain. I'm not real sure what that is it's almost like it's Mario I don't know uh, we got another Slimer one sick I never see these at all freaking awesome to say happy birthday Fred on it interesting also just on the real Ghostbusters. this is September 17th um, probably like 88 89 actually I'm thinking maybe even a little later um, probably like 89 or 90 I say the real Ghostbusters show debuted in the fall of 86. So they had three seasons of that, and then the last two were Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. So um, the show ran until 91, I believe. So this is probably around 1990. Pretty awesome, man. I am stoked to uh, open these up and give them a read right after that, right after this video is over. Thank you so much, Dave. I will definitely check out your channel. And... Um, yeah, if there's anything that uh, you're looking for, definitely let me know. I got uh, lots of toys laying around and whatnot, so I will check this out and uh, hope to hear from you soon, Dave. Everybody else, go and uh, sub to anything you want full. All right, so one last package left, and this is the, the very first one I received um, recently, and it's from another YouTuber. Uh, hopefully I don't butcher the name, but it's Rusty Kupyar, or Kupyar, and uh, I, I chat with Rusty through the comments here and there. He also has an interest in um, older toys as well. Seems like a really cool guy. Um, this one I did the shake test on, and I don't know if you guys are here or not, but it kind of sounds like it is VHS tapes. That's what I'm thinking, and it's also it was also sent media mail as well. So as you can see there, media mail uh, subject to inspection. Then you have to note media mail. If you send things media mail, the USPS is entitled to rip through it if they like to make sure that it's qualified for media mail. Media mail is a lot cheaper than sending things priority and and pretty much everything else basically. You can send a big box full of stuff for 
dirt cheap. I'm gonna actually open it to the bottom. Very nice and carefully there. Just enough to get it open. Crack a little bit. Maybe I was wrong. It's not VHS tapes. We have CDs. Nice. We have a CD here. What is this? Passive Destruction. This is pretty cool. I can't say that I have ever heard of this band. Looks like a black metal group given by the font there. Uh, Encrypted Records 2002. Well, this is pretty cool, man. I, I've never heard of this, but I'm going to check it. Check them out. Passive Destruction. Pretty sick, man. I haven't any, done any CDs in a long time, man. I usually Bluetooth everything to my phone. Oh, no way. No way, man. This is sick. I've been wanting this for a very, very long time. I guess I was right about being VHS. Anybody unfamiliar with this? This is the Gargoyles movie um, from the mid-90s. I never ever had this and I've wanted it for the longest time. Wow, this is sick. One of my favorite cartoons of all time here. Wow. I'm just shocked right now. This is freaking awesome, man. So, it was actually a game that you could play along as well. Players must glide quickly along among the streets of Manhattan to stop Xanatos and Demona. If they do not reach the Xanatos building in 20 minutes, Xanatos will unleash Steel Clan robots and destroy the gargoyles. Steel Clan and ro robots were no joke. They were gnarly. So, this actually has, um, I believe, a free, free inside interactive VCR board game. Um, yes, yeah, so it does have a videotape inside of it as well. I don't really know how to pop this open. How this thing opens up. I've never actually held this before or really looked at it or anything. I guess the VCR or VHS tape slides out of here. Wow, this is sick. Gargoyles the movie. Come to think of it, I don't know if I've ever even watched the movie, honestly. It's been so long. I have the whole the whole series on, on DVD, but it doesn't have the movie on, on any of them. So there's that, and I'm guessing the board game is on the other side. This is a freaking awesome collectible. Here. Wow. I don't know, I don't know what to say, Rusty, except for thanks a lot, man. This is brand new, too. Holy crap. Still in the original plastic here. Here's the actual board game. There's a spinner and some pieces. Yeah, this has never been used before. I need to move my camera back some so you guys can actually enjoy this like I am. Too close, but uh, never been used. There's the game pieces and whatnot and the spinner. Then you have Lisa, Demona. Wow. And then, is this the actual, this must be the actual uh, board itself you play on. Either that or it's a gnarly poster. And it could be double as both, I guess. This is sick, Rusty. Wow. I'm gonna pull my camera up so you guys can see this a little more. This thing is a pretty big game. I'm gonna flatten that out so I can play it. I don't know if I wanna play this or keep it in the box as to collect it. I mean, I'm sure I probably will play it. This game looks freaking sick, man. Wow. Thanks so much, Rusty. I didn't see if there was an actual note in there or not. Um, I don't think, I don't believe that there was. Um, yes, there is. I guess if I would open it from the top, I would have read that first. Let's check out Rusty Road. Well, I might have to edit that out. He's got his address on here. I'm gonna put this to the side. Let's see you at Rusty Road. Hey John, love the channel. A great variety of toy lines mixed with cards and fleet taking hunts. Since we keep talking about this, I thought I'd send it along. Not doing me much good sitting in a box in the basement. Also sending along a CD from one of my old bands, Vexation. Sick, man. That's awesome. I was going to say, I was wondering if I ever heard of them. Old school death rash. Real raw. 
Hope you enjoy these things. Take talk soon. Rusty. That's sick, man. I had no idea that was your old band, so. Vexation, Passive Destruction is the name of the album, I guess. So, definitely gonna give this a listen. Sounds pretty awesome, Rusty. And, um, you'll have to let me know some of the stuff that you collect as well. Um, I have your contact info here and also your number and whatnot. Um, I know we've talked about different things too as well. So, we'll have to talk more about what the, you know, the things that you collect, especially as far as the baseball card and stuff go. I'd like to send you some stuff back, man. This is really cool. Give me a huge solid by sending me this. I like never come across these at all. So, thanks so much, Rusty. I appreciate it. And to everyone else who sent me fan mail, much appreciated. I will uh, try and send you some stuff out uh, after the weekend's over. And if you guys, anybody else would like to send me some fan mail, I love vintage toys. I also love uh, old baseball rookie cards. It's mostly what I collect. I'm going to put my P.O. box here, and I'm also going to put some toy lines that I collect up there. So if you guys have anything laying around, you you know you're not using it, you want to send it off to somebody who's going to appreciate it. I will definitely take them, and uh, you know write some notes, and I'll send you some stuff back. But that is it for the first episode of Fan Mail Friday. I think that uh, it was pretty successful based on everything that I got. So much appreciated to the fans that sent mail. You guys are freaking awesome. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys, and I'm glad that you like the channel. So until next time, you guys have a good weekend, and I will talk to you soon. See ya.